need to think about how Google actually works. Now, you've probably heard this idea of the, the World Wide Web and this little graphic that I've drawn here. I'll just see if I can wake my mouse up here. Um, you'll notice those, those blue dots. If you imagine, my mouse is not working, there we go. Um, if, if you imagine those blue dots as different websites and you've got, um, see how they're connected together and they're connected as one website links to another. And the visual of that is almost like a web. When you imagine a series of websites linking together, one website linking to another and pages within pages linking to other pages. Now that's kind of how the web is made up, all of these different websites linking together. Now Google has what they call a spider, and you've heard of the search engine spider, and effectively what it does is it crawls around this web and makes discoveries and then reports back to index, to Google's index. So basically it says, hey, I've just discovered a new page. Have you got this in your list of all of the available websites on the internet? And Google will say yes or no, and if it's no, it'll just add it into its index. And it's got this ever-growing list of websites as part of its index. That's kind of stage one as to how the internet actually works or how Google works. There's the little spider, it's crawling around the web and then reporting back to Google. Then the next piece of the puzzle is to have the query software, which basically then determines, you know, how does Google actually decide what is going to be the best result? When you're on the internet and you type in your keyword uh, or the words that to uh, get Google to display some results, once you type that in, how does Google determine out of the entire index that it's got, out of all of the opportunities and websites out there that it could serve up, how does it actually determine which it should bring up in position number one? And the way it does that is through its algorithm. This is kind of uh, um, the, the, the secret source, so to speak, when it comes to Google. Now, it works a little bit like a popularity contest. Uh, this is how Google determines what should be coming up number one on the search engines when you type in a particular phrase. So if you imagine a popularity contest, there I am in the middle and I, I, I want to be popular. Now I can sit here and tell you how great I am and how awesome I am, um, but that'll just sound a little bit sort of egocentric and you know it's, it's of course I'm going to say that I'm, I'm great. Now it's not until other people start to say, oh yeah, Dave's cool. Dave is actually a, a really cool guy that my level of coolness starts to raise. Um, so that said, though, it's not um, uh, it's not that everybody's word is considered the same. Some people's word has uh, more weight than others. So let's say we've got on the right of me, uh, old man Joe, and here's some crazy dude down the street who kind of lives underneath neath the bridge, and he goes, Dave's cool. Now, his word only carries a little bit of weight. But if you look on the left-hand side, if we say someone like, if Brad Pitt were to say, hey, Dave's cool, then uh, his word carries much more weight. And the reason is because he's got lots of other people referencing him and saying, Brad Pitt's cool. So what I wanted to show you here is this popularity contest. So if you imagine this as a metaphor, and we bring this over now to the internet, and rather than people, we think in terms of websites. And what we're looking to do um, this is how Google determines what to bring up is, you know, what is a popular website is uh, the websites that are getting links pointed to them. So I'll, I'll drill down into that in a little bit more detail, but the takeaway here is not all links are created equal and it works a little bit like a popularity contest. <laughs>